Okay, so we've already seen that we can um, implement the get function um, using this simple list map. So we showed that in an earlier video. So that get function um, was used or demonstrated when we introduced hash map or maps in general, whether it's a hash map or a tree map. Um, that was discussed earlier without talking about the implementation in detail, the tree map or the hash map. And now we're working on something that we're calling a list map. And I want to be able to do the same functions, right? I want to be able to do a put. And I want to be able to do a get. So you've seen how we can do a get recursively. But I'd like to look at implementing the put function. Um, so that's, and, 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 and ideally what I want to do is take this code that we're looking at where it says tree map and hash map and lines eight and nine, I should be able to change um, any one of these, right? Whether it's the, you know, if I want to change uh, hash map into the list map and then have the code retrieve or put information in using the same functionality, right? You put something in by associating with the thing that you wish to put in, like in line 18, we want to put Angelina Jolie, um, we have to give a unique, uh, we've indicated it'll be an integer, so a unique numeric identifier, and we're going to use that to be able to retrieve that Angelina Jolie object that would have been created, say, in line 12. So what we're choosing to do, though, when we do our puts for the unique identifier, we go ahead and extract the social security number, and then we drop that um, in as the value that's going to be used, or the key that's going to be used to retrieve Angelina Jolie. So let's look at our put. So here's our first effort at a put. Um, public uh, void put, and we're going to follow the model um, that we've been using for the standard library maps. And that model is um, the put will receive a key in order to retrieve the value of the object that we put in there and the object itself. So one of the easiest implementations of a put can be thought of like, uh, like this, similar to what we did with bag, the bag ADT and with the stack ADT, whenever we did a, a put, I'm sorry, whenever we did a push in this case, if it's a stack, but we would go ahead and create the new object. And as we create it, we have his reference point to the existing first. And then we would go ahead and remove first and make that the new first. So we could put items to the front in that manner. Um, and it would look something like this, where we go ahead and, as I said, create the new object. And that new object is a node. And that node will have a particular integer or a key that we're going to use to go and extract the information and the object that we wish to pull out. And that reference of that node as it gets constructed here is going to be a reference to the very first item in that, uh, that linked list or our list map. So let's do that. We now have that node created. Now, once that node is created, it's going to return a reference to us. And so the reference that we're going to use by doing something like this first equals new node, it removes that reference that was at the very beginning to this new start. And then we'll go ahead and increment the size. So that's one way of doing it. And if you try that, you'll see that it works and it places items at the very beginning. Um, what I'm going to do instead is, um, you know, this, this will work, but let's, let's kind of go ahead and um, give that a try, see if it works. And then I'm going to comment that out and use code that's going to look more like the recursive code that we wish to implement. Um, because that's going to help us 
uh, in think about this this addition of nodes uh, being placed into a binary search tree. So instead of adding it to the beginning, we actually want to kind of walk down the end of a linked list or the end of a um, of a binary search tree and then add a particular node. So we want to be able to walk down till we find an empty spot and then add it. So this code that I show here is going to look more like the recursive code that's going to be used for what we call a tree. So we're still going to follow um, this same model. So maybe I'll copy that. So we've commented out that code and the code that's going to help us better understand how trees are implemented. Um, as far as the user is concerned, we, again, we want to model the typical application and usage of a put. They're just going to put in a key and a value. Um, and so we're going to see how we can do this recursively, but behind the scenes, there's going to be a put that um, will start at the very beginning of the list. And we're going to drop in the key and the value. So the user that's calling this should not have to have a reference to the, the root, or in this case, the first node. They just need to know they're putting in a key and a value. They don't need to know the details of the underlying structure. So this put has a different signature um, than this one here. So these are two separate methods um, with similar names or identical names. So this then is going to be an overloaded method, right? They have the same names. Um, they have the same name, but different signatures, right? So this one just has the two parameters and the one we're going to discuss right now has three uh, parameters. So um, we're going to show an overloaded method and this one's going to be private. Now, um, and then after we have completed that put, there's going to be an increment on the size. So this one here that's private um, is going to accept those three parameters, a node reference. It's going to accept the key and the value. It's going to be used later on when we do our gets to extract it. So imagine we have a blank list and we're trying to do a put. If there's nothing in our list, right? If we're just sitting there with the first being equal to null, then we'll go ahead and create the new node and return a reference to that node that's been created. So let's return the reference to that new node that's been created. And we'll go ahead and drop into its constructor the key, um, the value, and put a null at the end since it's initially we're just looking at that, we're placing them at the end. In fact, since it's initially null, it would be at the end. Now, here's the other scenario where it's not an empty list, but we have multiple elements already in there. Um, so it would look something like this. There's the beginning, and each one of those is the key one, value one, key two, value two, key three, value three, right? It's our database. Now, as we're trying to do a put in there, if it's already in there, um, we don't want to put it into that list. So if we're sitting on any given node, we need to know um, if we have found a duplicate. So what we'll do is this. 
And this method here is important because it follows the patterns that we're going to see um, with two links with, with trees, where there's a left link and a right link versus just a one link uh, pointing to the subsequent node. So um, we'll do a comparison. We'll take the key that's being um, passed in and stored when we do our put, but we're going to compare that key to the node that we're currently sitting on. So x is going to be a variable that's used to walk through and traverse uh, this linked list. So we're going to do a comparison to see if we found it. Now remember the compare uh, method, the compare to method, ultimately is just a simple subtraction, right? So if the key that I'm looking for, um, the key that I'm looking for, for example, is an 80, but the node that I'm sitting on currently has maybe a 50 or a 40. Um, when we do the subtraction, initially 80 minus 50, you'll get a 30. And you'll know that that's not equivalent. You do the next subtraction, it would be 80 minus 40. That's not equivalent. But then at some point, you may come to a note that has it, and it would be an 80 minus 80, and that's equal to 0. So as we move through this, if we do find a duplicate key, um, then we don't want to insert um, a copy, another copy. Right, um, each node should be a unique identifier. So if we find that the result of this comparison is equal to zero, then we need to do something sensible such as maybe print out duplicate found and not create a new node from here. Right, um, and we could just return the node that we're currently sitting on. But what if it's not zero? If the comparison, if the result of this comparison is not equal to zero, then here might be the most um, important part of these four or five lines of code. Then we're going to say, that x dot next is equal to, and here, right here, we're going to call put with a reference to the node that's in front of us, x dot next. So if we're sitting on this one currently, when we call our put, put's going to be called again so that we're now sitting on this one. So we're going to call put with x dot next, carry along our key and the value that we're looking to insert and start all over. So we start all over and we've moved to the next node, essentially. Now put is working with the, the node, the subsequent node. We see that it, if it's equal to null, then we've reached the end. Um, if it contains the value, then we can bail out and say duplicate has been found. Otherwise, um, we have not found um, a duplicate, right? The comparison is not equal to zero. And so we'll go ahead and call put all over again. So each one of these, right, this, this will continue until um, we get to the end, right? So if x is equal to null, return. So x wouldn't be equal to null at this point. Um, and so we'd call put all over again. And then this time when we call put, we would actually be sitting there with a null reference. And if x is equal to null, we create the new node and drop in those values and nullify it, put in a null, and we return that new node. So a reference to that new node will be returned, created here, and returned to the previous reference, x.next which was the previous one. He gets established so that he's now pointing to that new node. I guess it would be here, 
right, since we're at the end. Um, and then we'd return x to the previous call. And so that would continue going back up um, the sequence of, of uh, a function calls or put calls. So that is maybe one of the more important um, few lines of code is that put, that in, inserting an item into this and doing it recursively. So why is that important, that put that we just saw? Well, you're, you'll see next that it follows the patterns of um, insertion and the get follows the patterns of a, of a removal or a retrieval of, the, uh, of a simple tree. So take one more look at this, right? Notice the comparison. Um, then looking at the result of that comparison, and then making a decision to traverse forward. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at will be a simple tree where the node is not just the next, um, right? So the node that we work with or that we've just seen so far has typically been something like this, node next with a key and a value. Well, this one's gonna be different. Now we're going to add a node left and a node right. Um, and our puts are going to look very similar. We'll do a comparison, again, printing out duplicate found. We'll just add a couple of lines of code. If the comparison is negative, we're going to call put all over again and kind of start to traverse along, not a linked list, but it's a, it's a tree in this case. It's a split, it's a binary search tree. Um, and so we're either going to go left or we're going to go right based on the result of that subtraction. Um, depending on, and that subtraction is gonna let us know, um, you know, basically how to traverse and get down to the path where this particular new node that we're looking to insert this new key and therefore node should be placed. So we'll see that um, in, a, in another video.